Okay, here it is. This is 25 differences between the MacBook Pro Retina 13 inch and the MacBook Air uh, 11 inch. The, uh, the Air is the 2012, uh, late 2012 model. The Retina is the latest uh, 2014 model. Not that it makes a difference because I'm not doing benchmarks or anything like that. So I compare the screens, I compare the keyboards, the trackpads, um, the differences in, in shape and, and a lot of other things. Anyway, this will be different than most of the other, probably all of the other uh, comparisons you ever see. I compare the Air 11 and the Retina 13 because, first of all, I don't have the 13 inch Air. Um, but I wouldn't buy it now that I have both of these. Uh, and the reason I wouldn't buy it is because it's, it's sort of an in-between that doesn't offer anything great you know, between these. The Air offers much lighter weight, uh, sharper screen a little bit, and the keyboard is exactly the same. Um, to me, I prefer the 11-inch Air if I'm going to choose between the 13-inch Air and the 11-inch Air. Uh, and then if you're going to get a 13-inch anyway, you might as well get the Retina. And anyway, so here's the, here's the review. At times I'm going to be picking up this and shooting here. You might see that in some of the shots if I don't, if I don't um, time them right. Okay, so the first difference is the size and shape of the screens. Um, the Retina Air 13 is on the left here, and the 11 inch is on the right. You can see right away there's a difference in the shape of the screen. So the Air has a uh, shorter, shorter height screen and wide, and the Air is, I mean the Pro is more, almost square, but uh, it's, of course it's a rectangle. The difference is um, 11 and 2 eighths inches wide on the um, Pro, 10 and 1 eighth inches wide on the Air. So the difference is 1 and 1 eighth inches, which isn't a lot, right? I mean, it's just... It's very little. Then when you look at the height, so the height of the Air is 5 and 5 eighths, and the height of the uh, Pro is 7 inches. So the difference there is 1 and 3 eighths inches. So again, very little difference, right? And you can see here they don't exactly line up. This one is lower than this one is. This one is higher up because of the bezel. Um, the difference on the diagonal which tells you more about how much screen, how much more screen there is. There's, um, there's 13 and 2 eighths inches to go diagonally and 11 and a half inches to go diagonally on the air. So what that means is if I can find my measuring tape is that the total difference between them is 1 and 3 quarter inches. That much on the diagonal. That's the difference between the screens. So it is considerable. I mean if you look at it like this, but when in actual use it's not that much different. Here I'll open up my um so here's a web page brought up on both. And you can see you can see just about the same amount of text. I have it on default resolution for both of them. And you can see you see just about the same amount, right? You miss this uh, little little piece of the the picture there on the right side column. That's about it. So the reason I keep my resolution, you can shrink the resolution on the on the Pro and make it much better, um, better as in smaller, so you get to see more on the screen. And it's still sharp. It's even sharper than the than the MacBook Air. But at this resolution, it's ultra sharp. So I just leave it on the default because I don't mind it as it is right here. Here's the other difference, the brightness on the screen. This is number two. So you have two pictures. These are uh, monks at a Buddhist temple that I go to a lot. These are uh, women monks or magi, magi, magi. And the difference in brightness, I hope you can see. And you have to look straight on. Like look at the brightness here. And then look at the brightness here. I don't know if you can see it or not, the MacBook Pro is brighter, the Retina screen is brighter. Um, it's, it's very obvious when you look at it, it's not so obvious when I'm shooting a video because for some reason it just doesn't show up, it actually looks like the air is brighter. But 
in reality it isn't I don't know how to change that I don't know how to make you see what I'm seeing but <laughs> for some some craziness of the camera it uh, it actually shows it looks it looks in camera that that is brighter on the air but it isn't that's all I can say <laughs> Number three, the glare of the screen. So you know how people say that the uh, glare on the retina screens is so much, you know, because you have a glass, you have a glass um, cover on the screen. Uh, but when you compare the MacBook Air 11 and the um, and the Pro, there's no difference in glare at all. There's no difference between them. You can see just as much glare on the Air as you can on the Pro. And uh, I did this. Uh, inside in my room here I see no glare on either screen because I don't have any bright light source behind me I don't have any lights on in the on the ceiling when I go outside and I, I turn the screens around and compare them both I just did it and there's no difference at all they, they give equal amounts of glare and yes you can see like I can see the apartments behind me I can see the sign you know and, and all of that so between them there's no difference and there's very little glare to begin with, so you don't um, you don't even notice it. I don't notice it in the room here. I don't notice it when I sit on the porch. Uh, when I go in the back, sometimes I notice it because there's a bright source behind me. You know, the wall is is lit white, and uh, I really notice it there. But that's about it. It's not really a big deal. So the colors of the screen, and we go back to the to the image I had. The colors of the screen are just remarkable on the retina. There's no, there's nothing you can say that, that, that they're comparable. The retina screen is just much more brilliant. Contrast is nicer. Uh, but you're not really, you're not going to miss it if you don't know what the retina looks like, right? So I had the air for over a year, almost a year and a half. And you know what? The color is amazing on the air as well. But it, you can see it's not as saturated. I don't know how close I can get here and get a good focus. I don't think that's focused. But if you look at like the greens and the skin colors, skin tones, and then you go here and you can see they just pop, right? That's the contrast and the saturation and the um, the different levels of, of tone, of hue, I mean you can see so much more in the retina. So that's the way it is if, um, if that's important to you and you do um, photo editing a lot, you're going to want to get the retina screen. Photo editing and video editing and colors are really important and detail in the scene is really important. You're going to have to get the retina. For contrast of the screens, straight out of the box the retina has um, black, blacker blacks and whiter whites. The whites are almost blue though, it has like a cool tone to it. Uh, the, the MacBook Air, straight out of the box, the blacks are gray, they're dark gray, but they're still nowhere near the black of the retina. And the whites are pretty perfect as far as whites, they're warmer tone and to me it looks more white. Um, so again, the retina has the it has the range. I mean, it has real bright bright whites, and it also has dark blacks. So, uh, really nice for photo editing. Number six is the clarity of text on both screens. And I was shooting video of this earlier and tried to test it, but I can't really show you. It's um, the clarity of text is not a big difference, you know. Um, of course, it's sharper on the retina and it's sharper and it's also easier to read because the contrast on the retina screen is better. The difference between the whites and the blacks of the text is greater. There's a greater difference between the two. The contrast is higher so it makes it a lot easier to, to read text on the retina. And then especially if you have really small font, uh, it's, it's much easier to read on the retina. Um, that said, I've never had a problem reading small text on the MacBook Air 11 so um, until you until you use the retina, you don't really understand what you're missing. Um, but once you use it, and once you use it, like I used it for 35, 40 days now, so I'm pretty aware of the differences. And yeah, I prefer the retina to read small text. Okay, number seven is the keyboard. The key travel is more on the Pro 
that means it's deeper like if I hit I'm gonna be typing on my thing here but if I hit the H there's a certain distance I have to push in order to register a keystroke right push the H here and the the distance I have to push is more shallow so it's um there's a difference uh, I still know when I'm pressing the H, I know I press the key, so it gives me good feedback on that. Um, and here as well, it gives me even a little more feedback. It's more of a solid, solid push. You know, I definitely know that I, that I hit the key. Um, so what this means is the, uh, it's just nicer feeling. I have a, a better feeling for it on the air. It feels better to me. And I used the Air for a year and a half, as I said. Uh, this one, I've, the Pro, I've only used for 40 days, but uh, my preference is for the Air. Okay, number eight, the speed of typing on either. Um, I can consistently type 85 words per minute on the MacBook Air 11 inch keypad. On the MacBook Pro uh, 13 inch Retina, I can type about 74. These are averages. I've done it a couple times now, but they're consistent. I mean, I, whether I've been using the MacBook um, Pro Retina for 40 days straight and then I switch to the Air and try to type on it, uh, I still type much faster on the Air. So there could be some learning effect, you know, in there. But uh, my preference is for the Air, and uh, I'm obviously faster and also more accurate on the Air as I type. And I don't know why that is exactly. It's got to do. The keyboards are basically the same size. As far as width, they're exactly the same size. As far as um, height or depth between like the Q and the Z rows, uh, those are very close to, to, to they might, they're probably right on, they're probably exactly the same. But when you add the last line, like the control option command line and the space bar, they're thicker on the uh, Pro a little bit. So just barely a difference, but so I don't think it's that. I think it's more of the uh, the key travel required to press a key. You know, on the um, on the IBMs like the IBM Chiclet keypads keyboards, uh, you have to really push down, and it gives a real solid feeling. And some people like that because back from the IBM Selectric days, when we used to type on on typewriters, uh, we used to like that bang bang bang, like you know you type the key, you know, and then you kind of get into a rhythm, and you can type pretty fast on those. But now the MacBook Air surpasses that, I think. I, don't, I no longer like the IBM uh, chiclet keypad the best. I like the MacBook Air 11 inch. Uh, and 13 inch is exactly the same from what I used in the store. So number nine is the MacBook Pro uh, keys are slightly harder to press down. Um, there's more effort needed. And then again, you, you definitely know when you press the a MacBook Air 11 inch key, you know when you pressed it, but you also know a little bit more when you pressed it on the Pro. So some people might prefer that. Number 10 is the weight is very different. Um, you know, when I got the MacBook Air 11 inch, I got that first and I, you know, when I picked it up, I was, it was magic, man. This thing is so light and so thin for what it is and what it does. I was just you know, absolutely floored. And when I bought it and took it home, you know, I've, I've been constantly amazed by it for a year. So it's, it's been magic for a year. Like every time I, I have like four other IBM uh, Windows computers here. And you know, when I have to use those, I'm just like, oh. Then I bought the MacBook uh, Pro 13 inch Retina. I bought it for the screen basically and for the typing experience. I thought it would be better even, but it isn't. But uh, when I picked it up, it's just like a regular computer. It's just like computers I've had for the past 12 years. You know, it's, it feels too heavy. It shouldn't be this damn heavy uh, compared to the Air. And of course, it's the battery, you know, to power the screen. But still, it's just not magic anymore. And it's just too damn heavy. When you compare the two, it's just no comparison at all. The Air is much more preferable. So if Apple actually comes out with a 12-inch uh, Air, Oh man, I'm gonna snap that up right away if it's real lightweight. We'll see what happens. Cranked up the brightness a bit. Number 11 is the um, size of the track pads. And you can see the shape is a little bit different. But as far as size, they are slightly different. I'll show you. As far as width, I think they are exactly the same width 
as far as depth, the MacBook Pro is uh, deeper. I'm not sure how much deeper I guess you can measure. Real quick. It's not going to be quick, is it? Three inches on the Pro. Um, one and a, almost one and, or almost two and a half on the Air. So there's a difference there. Uh, one thing to note is that I never have a problem with palm rest when I'm typing, when I'm writing. So I'm a writer and I write a hell of a lot. And I have never had the, the mouse jump around because my palm is resting on the, um, on the trackpad. So the trackpad is, uh, I said it before in my MacBook Air review, you know, the, the trackpad on these is just pure magic. And that doesn't change with the Pro. It's, it's exactly the same. Just a little more space. I prefer the smaller one, I think, just because I used it for so long. But uh, either way, it's they're fine. They're, they're absolutely awesome. Uh, I've never seen a Windows machine with anything like it. Uh, the sensitivity and the... The, um, everything is just perfect the way it's just made for my hands. I don't know. I don't know how Apple did it, but they made it absolutely perfect for me. The next difference between the two is the heat that comes out of them. So I rarely notice heat on either one. Let me say that first. But when I do notice heat, it's from the Retina. Um, the Retina does get warmer on the top here. I think I notice it more on the right. And then on the bottom, when I have it in my lap, I also notice the retina is, it gets warmer than the air, that's for sure. Now, it never gets to the point where uh, it's too warm to have on my, on my lap or uh, it's too warm to have my palms resting on here to type. So it's not really a big deal. Um, I don't like any heat at all, so I prefer the air. But uh, either way, uh, I don't think you're going to feel too warm with either one. Number 13 is the size and weight of the AC power cords uh, and units, power adapters. So these are both MagSafe 2s. Um, this is for the Pro and it's bigger and it's heavier. I don't know by how much, I don't have a scale. And this is for the Air, it's smaller and lighter, um, significantly lighter. Not, I wouldn't say half the weight, but uh, this is maybe 60% of the weight of that, just on a guess. And the cord length is exactly the same for both of them, so no, no real difference there at all. The next difference is, uh, this one is number 14. The difference between the plug magnets on the MagSafe uh, adapters, there is a difference. So it's annoyingly loose on the air, meaning this magnet is just weak. It's not strong enough to really stay in there. So when you're carrying your computer around the room, this is going to fall out. So you have to, it kind of defeats the purpose almost. You have to hold, either hold it in there as you walk around or just disconnect it, walk around, and then whenever you get where you're going, plug it back in. But the, the magnet on the um, MacBook Pro Retina 13 is much stronger and it, less likely to fall out. It's just a little bit nicer on the Pro. It's like they gave it some more thought and uh, decided to increase the strength of the magnets. Okay, the 15th difference is the sharpness of the palm rest area. So you can see on the MacBook Pro 13 inch retina, we have a sharp edge here. Some people that bothers. Uh, apparently my hands are not big enough for it to bother me. Um, my palm stops right there and I never feel that. I never feel that sharpness, never bothers me. And I'm never like this because these points are very sharp. I do understand this. Uh, I never hit them though, so I don't, I don't know why people are hitting those with their palms, but compared to the air, so the air slopes down, right? It slopes like this, so you don't feel this at all. You'd have to be under here to feel the sharpness of it, and you're not going to. Um, so the air, that's something that nobody ever complains about. Uh, I certainly never felt it, even though oh, my palms are very close to the edge here too, but not, not off the edge. I never really looked. Yeah, see, they're quite a bit on on the uh, palm rest there. Here, I'm just at the edge, but still, I don't I don't feel it at all. So maybe my hands aren't big enough to feel it, whatever. But uh, unless you have massive hands, mine are medium large, and uh, it doesn't bother me at all. The next difference, number 16, is the angled keyboard of the MacBook Air feels nicer. 
So it slopes down like this, right? This one does not. This one is horizontal, goes straight across. There's no slope at all. So when you're typing, you're, you're typing on it horizontally. So there's a reason that all of those keyboards, when you used to connect an external keyboard to your uh, desktop computer, all those keyboards were sloped, right? They were all sloped like this. The MacBook Air does that for you and slopes it. You can see from the side. <laughs> Dorking on my computer. You can see from the side that it slopes down gently, right? And that helps when you type. Um, the Retina does not, not at all, it goes straight across. So the, again, the MacBook Air is nicer to type on because of that. Number 17, the shallower height of the Air feels nicer for typing. And let me turn it around again and show you what I'm talking about. See that difference in height? It's uh, pretty substantial. Um, I wouldn't call it quite a quarter inch, but it's pretty close. So it's nearly a quarter inch lower on the MacBook Air. So what that means is your your wrists have to have to bend less. I mean, mine. I don't notice that they bend at all. My my wrist is straight. And then here, it it does bend a little bit to get up there. Um, so the difference uh, is pretty substantial and, and again it just makes it feel nicer to type on the MacBook Air. And the MacBook Air 13 inch is exactly the same as far as height. So again you'll, you'll feel that difference and you'll probably like the Air better to type on. Difference number 18. The MacBook Air charges significantly faster. Um, this could be a function of me having the old Air, right? I have the old one, uh, battery never lasted more than like six hours, so the new ones, you know, they last a lot longer and maybe the battery takes an equally long time to charge up, so this could be a, a factor of that. Um, but as it is between the 13 inch Retina um, 2014 edition and the MacBook Air 2000, late 2012 version, um, the MacBook Air charges real fast. Uh, I, I didn't time them, but the difference I would say is about 45 minutes to go from zero to full charge. Could be as long as an hour or so, but a definite difference and something to think about. I mean, if you only work in like three, three to five hour bursts and you need a full, full computer to do that, the MacBook Air will recharge for you much faster so you don't have to take that power adapter. Number 19, the speed between the two computers. So this is, um, this is again something hard to compare the two because they're so different. Uh, the, late, the late model 2012 Air 11 inch versus the Retina 13 2014 version. Right? So, and also I, I, I installed a faster hard drive. I installed the um, OWC Envoy um, from Otherworld Computing. And I installed a, uh, it's like a 240 gigabyte hard drive. And supposedly it's faster than the original 128 gigabyte hard drive in the air. So can be a difference. Um, I do notice, like I just opened uh, Chrome and I opened to a page on both of them. And the air, the air destroyed it. The air, the air opened it about four seconds faster than the Retina. So, um, so as far as speeds on simple programs and things like that, yeah, you install one of these one of these new hard drives, and you can actually go much faster than than um, the old Air, first of all, but also even than the Retina with the more powerful processor. Um, and then to compare the the two, um, when I'm doing photo editing or uh, video rendering, video um, edits, you know, that take a lot long time, and like I'm going to edit this all together, it's going to take a long time to render. But it's only going to take about an hour on the Retina, versus on the MacBook Air, it has taken like three hours at a time, you know, to, to put it all together to get a good file from it. So the difference is uh, pretty substantial there. If you're going to do video editing and hardcore photo editing, uh, you're probably going to want the Retina for sure. Uh, number 20 is sound quality. So there's a significant difference. The bases, there's a base, there's actually a little bit of bass on the Pro uh, versus the MacBook Air, it just sounds tinny. Uh, so that's, that's one big difference. 
sound quality as far as tone and everything, yeah, the MacBook Pro sounds much nicer. And that's through the speakers. Uh, through the headphones, I noticed no difference on the tones uh, or the bass. Um, very similar, probably the same. Number 21, the sound volume. On the Pro, I'm guessing it's 15 to 20 decibels louder on the Pro coming out the speakers uh, than it is on the Air. And then, surprisingly, I thought it would be the same, but through the headphones, through the earbuds, uh, same thing. It's actually louder through the Pro, so uh, it has a little bit more power if you like your music loud and strong. With a little bit of bass, you're going to have to get the Pro because the, the MacBook Air is... is I won't say horrible, it's, been, it's done its job for a year and a half, but uh, now that I hear it, I much prefer the Retina. Number 22, seeing the bottom of my writing. I better do that on this one. Okay, this is number 22 difference. Seeing the bottom of my writing. So you can see down here, um, I have writing almost on the last, I'll drag it down there I guess. So sometimes I, I'm typing and I'm too lazy to, to scroll up. I don't want to scroll, you know. And I'm typing on this and I'm slouching and at this angle I can't see what I'm writing. Over here, if I'm on the air, I can see what I'm writing because I can see the bottom all the time because of that dorky bezel. But the bezel actually helps because it, it keeps my big knuckles out of the way and I can, uh, I can continue to type. It's just a pain in the butt, uh, something that um, probably just affects me, but who knows, maybe if you slouch in your chair, it'll probably it'll affect you as well. Um, the 23rd difference is just a couple things on the outside. I mean, the ports, there's a, a greater variety of ports on the Retina. Um, I like that a lot. I, I really like that it has the SD card slot versus the Air does not. Uh, I don't enjoy that at all because I don't enjoy, where's that, see I can't even find it, the um, external um, SD card slot USB thing I have to put into the Air. I don't like that at all. So I like the ports on the, on the Retina Pro. They're vastly superior to the Air. Uh, you can connect to a uh, to a screen to an external screen with this monitor as well. Number twenty four using the using the computers on your lap. They're laptops, right? So when you put them on your lap, the the Pro is nice. It's solid. It sits there where it's supposed to, and it's actually uh, not bad to type on it, just like every other computer. The air is too damn light and too slippery, it'll fall right off your legs. I mean, I just find, as soon as you take your hands off it, it just wants to, it just wants to hit the floor. I haven't dropped it off my lap before, but, uh, you know, it's quite, a, it's quite a possibility. It just feels too slippery, it's not comfortable to type when it's on your, when it's on your lap. So the difference between the two is that the retina is much, much nicer that way. Number 25, it's too easy to feel like I'm jarring the Pro every time I set it down. Because it's so heavy, you can't control, like I set it down like this, it's hard to control how, how gently I set it down. With the Air, it's very easy because it's so lightweight, you know. You, I don't know, I just, I noticed the difference when I got the Retina and I started to set it down. It just feels like I'm jarring the hell out of this thing when I set it down. Too, it feels like I'm setting it too hard all the time. Um, Besides that, the Air has just a more solid feeling. I told you that I, my wife pushed it off a top shelf. It fell five to six feet, hit the solid tile floor like this, and uh, bounced all over the place. And still, it's got very small dings on it. You'd never know it fell from that height. It worked perfectly. It was running. There's no cracked screen. You know, it just it's solid. You know, when you close this, it's just like it's solid as anything. You can't. You can't believe how solid it is. The Retina, on the other hand, I know if it fell from that height, it would be destroyed, you know, just, it's, it's much heavier and then it doesn't feel as solid. So, those are the 25 differences between the two, and I'm going to give you a couple of freebies too. So, one freebie is that um, the MacBook Air and the MacBook Retina Pro. The MacBook Air opens up to this angle 
the MacBook Pro opens up a little bit more. So it's only a two to three degree difference. I don't expect you to see it here. I'm not gonna pull the camera off there to, to show you. Or maybe I am. So here's the difference between how much they open the, the, the screens. You can see the retina opens at a greater angle, a little bit more, two to three degrees. And that's helpful when I'm sitting on the floor and I want to, uh, to use the computer on the floor and I'm sitting on the floor, uh, Indian style. Uh, I like it to, to go back more. I wish it went back even more, but oh well. The next freebie, and this will be the last one, is that do, do not buy the Tucano aluminum alloy second skin folder uh, for any of the MacBooks because it just gets too dirty, man. This is like black. It's like I, like this thing went through a war. It's horrible. I mean, it picks up every bit of dirt possible. So don't get that. But do get the black one because it's not. If it picks up dirt, you could never know. The Tucano um, black one with the charge up slot will let you charge your, your computer as it's protected in the in the neoprene case. So this these are really cool. They're super padded. And then I even leave this in there. I'm not, I don't think you're supposed to. But they put this foam thing in there, you know, for display purposes. But heck, I just leave it in there too because I just figure more, more protection. And for my little one, I even uh, put a little foam piece in there too just for more protection. But anyway, yeah, these are super cool and super cheap. I think I bought mine for $36 here in Thailand, so good deal. And last thing I want to say is that if you're trying to decide between computers, I just did a new um, screen capture uh, showing a spreadsheet that I always use, and I'll show you how to go through it and set it up. But this will help you make decisions, any big decision that you ever have whether it's uh, choosing a computer, one of the MacBooks, choosing any kind of computer, whether it's uh, choosing two places to live, you know, move to Thailand or move to Hawaii, like I always do on my spreadsheet. Uh, this is a great way to make big decisions. And a, a long time ago, about five years ago, I wrote an article, how to make big decisions easily. And like 600,000 people have already read that on one of my websites. So. I'm going to do a video about it, how to, choose, how to make big decisions easily, and you can click on it uh, somewhere here on the page and go see that one real quick if, if you're having trouble deciding what you're going to do. All right, that's it. hope these helped you. Uh, I don't think anybody else is doing anything like this. These are more like actual user hands-on tips that, you know, I'm not talking about benchmarks and... Uh, speed of the unit and things like that other things that everybody else covers already i'm not unboxing it you know if unboxing yeah they're unboxed i mean but uh <laughs> but i hope these tips help you and i'm losing my voice so cheers